Hello my dear students, welcome back to plus 2 biology. Today our topic of discussion is the major processes in our DNA technology. We have already discussed the principles of our DNA technology. So today we are going to deal with which are the major steps or what are the major processes or the procedure in our DNA technology. Listen here, I have already listed out what are the steps in our DNA technology. The first step is isolation of DNA. For production of our DNA and its multiplication, first of all, we need the DNA sample. The first step is isolation of DNA. Second step is fragmentation of the DNA. I mean, the isolated DNA, we have to make the fragments into fragments and the third step is you know it is a separation of the DNA fragments through gel electrophoresis and fourth step is the after isolating our desired gene we have to introduce it to the vector the ligation of the desired DNA into vector then the fifth step is Transfer of the RDNA. I mean what we are producing here will be the RDNA. That should be transferred to the host cell. The transfer of RDNA to the host cell. And the sixth step is, if it is introduced to the host cell, multiplication or the culturing of the host cells in order to produce the product. The extraction of the product is the last step. It will be followed by various processes called downstream processes. So we are going to elaborate each step and some of these steps we have already discussed, the gel electrophoresis such cases and we don't elaborate such steps but some of the, st some of the steps we are going to elaborate now. Okay. So anyway, in brief we are going to discuss the steps in our DNA technology. The first step Isolation of DNA. Okay, so isolation of DNA is the first step in our DNA technology. Okay, so all of you listen here. What is meant by DNA isolation? Where are the DNA present? You know, the DNA, if, us, if we are collecting the DNA from bacterial cell or plant cell or animal cells, the source is different, the source cells are also different. Okay? And if we need to take a DNA from a human cell, the outermost membrane is the cell membrane, you know. Whereas if it was plant cell or if it is bacterial cell, this is protected by cell wall. The cell wall also we have to digest. So anyway, let us discuss how is DNA isolated in pure form how is pure DNA isolated from source cells? Okay? The source cells can be either plant cell or it can be animal cells. Okay? Then it can be bacterial cells. Then it can be fungal cells. Okay? In each case, we may require the usage of different enzymes. Okay, anyway, just listen here. If we are isolating DNA from a plant tissue or a plant cell, we have to digest the plant cell wall, which is made up of cellulose, by an enzyme called cellulase. So, if the DNA is isolated from a plant cell, we have to treat the cells with the cellulase enzyme. If it is from a bacterial cell, we have to treat the cells with a lysocyne enzyme. And if it's from fungal cells, we have to treat the cells with chitinase enzyme. You know the animal cells are not having a definite cell wall around it. There is not any cell wall that lysis required. So if it's a plant cell, treat the cell with the cellulase enzyme. If it's a bacterial cell, treat the cell with a lysocyne enzyme. And if it's a fungal cell, treat it with chitinase enzyme. This first step leads the cell wall breaking. Okay? The disruption of the cell wall. Then after that, you know, when the cell wall or the membrane is split open, you know, the cytoplasm consists of number of biomolecules, not only the DNA. So after the first treatment of enzyme, 
after the enzyme treatment of the cells, what is the next step? Then also we have to use number of enzymes and also there is centrifugation method. Anyway, after the first step treatment of the cell wall distraction, disintegration, then just understand the cell contain number of biomolecules. RNA will be present, proteins will be present, carbohydrates will be present, lipids will be present, okay, along with the DNA. See, the DNA is not alone present in the cell to get it very easily. So, it is present along with other biomolecules like RNA, protein, lipids, carbohydrates, etc. So, what we should do? So, our next step, step is digest the RNA. I mean, from a collection of the biomolecules, all RNA molecules we can digest using ribonuclease enzyme. RNA's enzyme. Using RNA's enzyme, we can digest all the RNA present in that. Then this will not be having any RNA. RNA will be completely uh, lysed. Then the protein can be, you know the steps already because you have studied the Avery Matt Lord McCarthy experiment. So in protein, to remove the protein from the collection of biomolecule, we are using protease enzyme. The usage of protease enzyme will distract all proteins present. The usage of lipase enzyme will remove all the lipids present. Similarly, the usage of carbohydrase enzyme, the respective carbohydrase enzyme, was maltase, maltose, or whatever it is. Okay, the respective carbohydrase enzyme remove all carbohydrates present in the sample. Now, what will be left in the sample it will be uh, DNA alone. The DNA we can precipitate in chilled ethanol. The DNA present in the sample we can precipitate in chilled ethanol. Okay, using chilled ethanol we can precipitate the DNA inside that. So it's a very simple isolation of DNA. It depends on the source material, whether it's from a plant or animal or a fungus or a okay, whatever, bacteria. If this respective enzyme treatment we have to do in order to break the cell wall. After the enzyme treatment to lyse the cell wall, we will get a collection of biomolecules. It contains RNA, protein, lipids, DNA, everything. Then we have to isolate only DNA, removing all these things. So in order to remove RNA, we are using RNA enzyme. In order to remove protein, we are using protease enzyme. In order to remove lipids, lipase enzyme. Then carbohydrates enzyme to remove carbohydrates. And what is left behind will be DNA alone, which can be precipitated in chilled ethanol. So we get DNA as fine threads in pure form in chilled ethanol. Then our first step is over. Okay? Then you tell me what is our next step. Our next step is fragmentation of the DNA. Along, along 2 meters long DNA which we obtain as fine threads, we have to make into fragments. How is it possible? You have already studied. It is with the help of restriction enzymes. So what is done in fragmentation of DNA? So in fragmentation of DNA, we are incubating the DNA sample. Incubate the DNA sample along with or restriction enzyme. Which restriction enzyme we are using? With that enzyme, we are incubating the DNA sample. Then what happens? At its specific palindromic site, wherever the palindromic sites are, at that site the DNA will be cut into number of random sized fragments. So incubate the DNA sample with the restriction enzyme. That is the second step. Then how was the separation done? You also studied that too. How was the separation done? Okay, that means after the action of restriction enzymes, we have number of differently sized DNA fragments. How to separate it is by gel electrophoresis. This also you have studied in detail. So the third step is gel electrophoresis. Okay, the DNA fragments are loaded into the gel electrophoresis tank. Then we can separate the DNA fragments according to their size when uh, electric current is provided. Okay, the DNA fragments will move towards the anode and they are separated according to their size. 
the smaller fragments will move farther. You have studied that. So the gel electrophoresis is the next step, the third step. Then after the gel electrophoresis, we can, from the gel, we can isolate our desired DNA. Which DNA piece we require, we can isolate from the gel electrophoresis tank by elution technique. And this DNA segment, we can then insert to what? A vector. That is the next step. Ligation to a vector. The fourth step is ligation to a vector. Okay. The DNA fragment is ligated to a vector. How is done? The vectors, the plasmids, suppose the plasmids or vectors cut with the same enzymes are taken in a container and collected DNA fragments are incubated with that. In the same way, vectors are incubated with the DNA fragments and which is the enzyme used there? With the help of the DNA leakage enzyme, this can be joined. Is it okay? So, incubate the vectors, which are vectors and the DNA fragments, which are cut with the same restriction enzyme. Incubate them with DNA ligase enzyme. Then upon action, this RDNAs can be produced. So, after this fourth step, we will get what? RDNA. Okay. The result of the fourth step is RDNA. Okay. Then, before moving to the transfer of our DNA to host cell, that also we have discussed. Okay, the host cell is made a competent first by treating with divalent cation if it's a bacterial cell, then ice heat shock, ice incubation. So before moving to transfer of our DNA to host cell, okay, let us discuss an another technique which can amplify a DNA segment. See, suppose we have got only few samples of this DNA. But in this step itself, we can amplify this piece of DNA. We can amplify and load into this ligation chamber. In order to multiply this DNA segment, before introducing to the host cell, we have a technique known as PCR, polymerase chain reaction. Let us discuss that technique first before moving to uh, Insertion to the host cell. Okay. So, a technique for amplification of DNA, PCR, polymerase chain reaction in detail. Okay. So, here we get what number of DNA fragments. Any of the DNA fragment we can amplify. If it's a desired DNA, if we need it for amplification without introducing to the host cells, we can amplify them by a process called PCR or polymerase chain reaction. In polymerase chain reaction, there are three major steps. The first step is denaturation. We are treating this DNA fragment so that it gets unbound to produce two single stranded DNA. For that, it is done heating or denaturation. About 90 degree plus temperature, the DNA fragments, if it is allowed, it gets separated, the two strands get separated to produce two unsegmented forms. This is a single stranded DNA fragment, this is another DNA fragment, single stranded. I mean, this gets unbound. The first step is to separate the DNA fragments. It is by denaturation done by heating. Okay. Then we get the two strands separate. Then the second step is annealing. Annealing means attachment of primers to the DNA template. Both these DNA strands, both the single strands can act as template to build the opposite strand. Which we are doing artificially. And here we need the attachment of the RNA primer. Okay, here we are not providing RNA polymerase enzyme to build an RNA primer. Remember the replication process. But here, we are attaching the RNA primer. You know, RNA should be first formed, then only the DNA will be built. The RNA we artificially attach by a process called annealing. So, attachment of RNA primers to the 3' end of the DNA. Both the strands 3' end we are attaching primers. It is known as annealing. 
In the second step, RNA primers are attached to the three prime end of the uh, single strands of DNA. Why it is the three prime end? Because new strand synthesis is always from five prime to three prime end. From five prime to three prime of the new one. Okay, so from here to here only new DNA strands will be produced. From here to there only. So the attachment of RNA primer should be at this portion of the three prime portion of the uh, template and at the three prime portion of this template also. Okay, so annealing is the attachment of the primer. Okay, then what is next? After annealing or after attachment of primer, it has to build the DNA. Okay, understand we have used a very high temperature for denaturation. Okay, normally the normal DNA polymerase enzyme cannot act in a, this particular temperature. In annealing, anyway, we reduce the temperature to 70 degree or like. Still, under that particular situation of high temperature, our normal enzymes cannot act. Here we require for building the new strand, that means an extension, third step. In order to build the new strand, the normal DNA polymerase is not enough. It requires a special enzyme, a special DNA polymerase enzyme known as TAC polymerase. Keep in mind, the enzyme name is TAC polymerase. Okay, this enzyme is a thermostable enzyme. It can withstand high temperature. It can act in high temperature. How is an enzyme able to act in high temperature? You have studied most of the proteins and enzyme gets denatured at high temperatures. Then how is it possible for the TAC polymerase enzyme to act at high temperature? This is because this enzyme has derived from a bacterium which live in hot springs. Its name is Thermus aquaticus. This enzyme belongs to this bacterium. What is special about the bacterium? This is a bacterium which inhabit high temperature habitats. Thermal springs. They are so thermostable. This enzyme has the experience of acting at high temperature. They act at high temperature. Their temperature optimum is high. Because this enzyme belongs to Thermus aquaticus, a bacterium of hot springs. Okay, so TAC polymerase is a thermostable enzyme. This enzyme only can be used for the step of extension because here is a high temperature existing. So when we add TAC polymerase here, okay, by the usage of TAC polymerase here, along with the nucleotides, nucleotide triphosphates. Okay, the ribo, deoxyribonucleotides. Okay, you know that. The substrates for the action. In order to build that, deoxyribonucleotides are required. As triphosphates, you know that. Then, that should be there provided. When we provide a substrate, deoxyribonucleotide triphosphates, along with the TAC polymerase, this primer can be uh, built. I mean, this DNA can be built according to template. Then this will produce two uh, new DNAs. Okay. From one we have produced two DNAs. And if this step was repeated within a short time because of the high speed action of the enzyme. Within a short time we can produce uh, about billions of copies of this DNA. Okay. Keep in mind billions of copies can be produced within a short time. So this is an amplification technique PCR. I think it's clear. Any more doubt means we will clear in our live session. Okay, so for today I'm winding up with this process. I mean, which can be used to amplify a desired DNA segment. Before inserting to the vector, before its ligation to the vector, any piece of DNA we can amplify with this technique of PCR, which has three steps, denaturation, annealing and extension. Since there exists a high temperature, we are using a special enzyme here. Its name is TAC polymerase, which has isolated from Thermus aquaticus bacterium. Okay, so see you in the live class. Thank you.